<laughs> Let's start that again. What's up guys? Today I'm going to be building uh, my first ever Hackintosh. The reason I'm building a Hackintosh is because the iMac has the GTX 775M, which is the mobile edition of the GPU inside. Now, I do quite a bit of gaming, but at the same time, I still need to use apps like Logic Pro X. Now, I was looking for an affordable solution, um, and as you're probably more than aware, Apple don't really offer them. Um, so I thought, I'll go back to my roots uh, of building PCs like I did when I was younger. As you can see, we've got the other camera here. That's mainly because I'm too lazy to edit two camera angles. So as we go through the parts, I'll tell you what they are and we'll do sort of an unboxing as we go. So first up is the Gigabyte Z170X. Let's crack this open. It's gonna go inside the Carbide 300R Corsair. I will remove this from the packaging. There we go. Got the windows in the side. There's the back. The front. On the front, we've got headphone port. Can you guys see that? Yes, you can. Headphone port, microphone port, two USB, three ports. Room for some extra fans and stuff on there. Now, the interesting thing is that I thought it was going to be a lot harder to do the Hackintosh, but. I mean, I've done a lot of research because I was so worried that I'd buy this and then I wouldn't be able to like run Logic, Logic Pro on it and, and that would just kind of oh, defeat the point in the build, really. Here's what's going to go inside. We have the GTX 980 Ti, the Samsung 850 Pro SSD. I've, I've got them in everything, pretty much everything I own. 512 gigabytes. Crucial Ballistics RAM, 32 gig here. I went for two sticks of 16 because I will get another two sticks of 16 and max it out at 64 gig anyway. But for pricing purposes right now, I just thought well, I'll go with 32 gig. Probably won't need 64 anyway for what I use it for. The processor, we went with the Core i7 uh, 6700. That's 3.4 gigahertz. If you haven't clocked on already, this build isn't gonna be the most professional build you've ever seen. But what I can tell you is, if I can build a computer, anyone can fucking build a computer. Just do what I do and wing it. If you haven't yet seen the video I did on um, my channel for Keys of War's build, so uh, my friend Kieran, he's a Twitch streamer, we helped him build that and that, that was fun. That's kind of what started me on this actually, it gave me the idea, I was like, man, I want a custom PC. Put that in the box file. This is the main thing, right? We need to get this inside. We need to get the motherboard inside. So I had quite a few questions and people asking me uh, from the last build I did with Kieran, like, oh, can you help me build my PC? Can you help me build my PC? You just gotta believe in yourself. You can do it, man. Okay, right. You know when I said just follow my instructions? Yeah, don't. Here we go. I've put the back plate on because I haven't got a proper surface to rest it on. And it wasn't really doing this any favours, so I'll just put that on for now. Right, it's just come to my attention that this screwdriver is too small. Right, back in a minute, I need a screwdriver. Okay, we're back. Motherboard's screwed in. Nice. Real nice. Next, I guess we should seat the, uh, seat the CPU. By the way, I'm not reading any instructions, like... I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but... I mean, it can't be that different to all those years ago, surely. Here's the heatsink. Okay, right, so on this bit of pl block of plastic, it says, install processor first, then remove and keep the cover. Yeah. Unlock the flap. Lift this up, right? See, this is the most nerve-wracking thing, is putting this in, because there's so many tiny pins on there that if you fuck it up, man, it's, it's, it's fucked. You gotta, you gotta get one of these again, or you gotta get one of those again. When you push this down, you hear, like, a crunching noise. Very, very important, right? So some goo on there, but we're gonna also add our own bit of goo. Where's my goo? Where's my beer, more importantly? There we go. Okay, so this is Arctic Silver 5 Thermal Compound 3.5 gram chew. New. Get a wee bit of this, luge it on the middle. Hey, we did it! Okay, so that's in. I mean, it'll be here, the sticker's upside down, but whatever. Let's get the power supply in. 
think I went a little bit overboard with the power supply because I went with 1,000 watts of power. I thought if I ever need extra power, then I, I got it right there, man. Here we go, we got the manual, warranty guide. Whatever, man, that shit's for suckers. That is some sexual packaging right here. What? You get a bag? Look at this, braided cables, the lot, man, that's awesome. Wish I could build custom gaming PCs for a living. Anyone out there that works for a custom gaming co company, hit me up. I'm good at marketing and building computers. Probably do it at the same time. This is hefty, man, I like it. <coughs> Burp cam. Really, really sexy pair of shoe. All the connectors on the back that you will ever need. I should probably read the manual, but hey ho, I'm not gonna. Silent operation at low to moderate loads. In this mode, the fan will not spin. What? Uh, step two, install memory. Do you know what, let's do, let's do that right now. I said I wouldn't read any instructions. So far, I read them all. Let's just chuck this in. This is really easy. I mean, if I can't do this, then there's, there's literally no hope, so. Now, there's only one way this stick will go in. Um, as you can see here, there's a little notch on there, just there. And basically, it's sort of, you know, it's not dead in the middle. These slots here are different colours. So you've got two black and two sort of, I don't know, grey or something. So you want to just make sure that the two sticks that you've got, if they're matching, to go in the matching slots. So. Okay, we're going to do the PSU in a minute, but first we're going to get the card in. This is the 980 Ti. As you can see, a real sexy card. Um, the only other one I could have gone for that was more powerful than this is the Titan X. We've got to get these thumb screws out. Now, we install the card. Boom. When you hear that popping, that's when you know you're in business. I just realised this the screen's changed, hasn't it? That's fine, we'll change it back. Okay, graphics card in. I mean, so far so good. I mean, we haven't powered it up to see if it actually bloody works, but we'll get to that a bit later. I'm now resorting to reading instructions all the time because you can never be too sure. I'm just gonna follow the instructions. We've got all these sort of like case cables here, which I'm probably gonna put on first, considering these are the, the cables that we've been, we have been given. We're just gonna make this all nice and neat. Let's get the hard drive in. This isn't gonna fit in here. Luckily, I have some connectors for that. We got we got these this red thing that basically converts it from a something to a something else. Uh, so now we can pop this in here. Okay, guys, it's finally time to. Uh, I didn't film a lot of this because it was a lot of fiddling and it was boring. Um, which is looking real tasty. The graphics card. PSU, looks real nice, SSD, the only thing left to plug in is that connector there, and then we're good to go, I think. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear the Mac off the desk, and then we'll get everything plugged in. Okay guys, so as you can see, I have everything plugged in, excuse the absolute mess down here, but I think we're, we're just about ready to turn this bad boy on. Okay, now I'm gonna be running this through the power conditioner here, so first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and flick this on. We're gonna flick this on. Here we go. Oh! Are we good? We're good. Okay, now the moment of truth. The on button, ladies and gentlemen. We're off. And we're in business. We got a screen, yay! Right, that's the easy part over. Now to actually get the Hackintosh on there. So let's fiddle around with some bar settings and I'll see you in a minute. So she's booted up for the first time. There's a few things you've got to do in the BIOS. I'll leave a link below. I'm using a guide from Life Hacker, uh, which is actually from Tony Mac X86. These are the settings in your BIOS that you're gonna to need to sort out. So to access the BIOS slash UEFI setup, you're gonna press and hold the delete on a USB keyboard while the system is booting up. This will take you into the BIOS, which is a screen that you see behind me. What you're gonna to wanna to do is load the optimized defaults. This USB key, I already took the long task of downloading OS X Sierra, which is the latest version, onto USB, 
and put it on here using a tool called UniBeast. We've also got a tool called MultiBeast, which we've chucked on here. But basically what I've done is made this USB key bootable, which is what we're gonna use to hopefully install Mac OS. The settings that you're gonna to need to make sure uh, that are either disabled or enabled in your BIOS. So um, CPU, so VTD, you wanna make sure it's disabled. If your system has CFG lock, disable it. If your system has secure boot mode, disable it. Set OS type to other OS. If your system has IO serial port, disable it. Set XHCI handoff to enabled. And if you have a six series or X58 system with a Ward BIOS, remember to disable USB 3.0. And then what you wanna do is save and exit. Now, what I'm gonna do is before I reset this, I'm gonna insert my USB stick and we're gonna try and boot from this USB. Okay guys, so I run into my first hiccup, which was I don't think I partitioned the uh, drive, the USB drive properly before um, before running UniBeast and copying the files over. So I couldn't actually get it to boot at all. It just said insert proper boot device and then restart the, the machine. You wanna open up disk utility, highlight the USB drive, and then just actually format it for OSX extended journaled and then under the scheme, you need to select GUID partition map and then erase the drive and then run UniBeast and obviously put uh, Sierra on there. I'm gonna try this again. If that doesn't work, then uh, we're gonna go into the forums and dig a bit deeper, but I'm hoping this should work. So let's wait till this transfers and then uh, see what happens. UEFI, here we go. This didn't come up before, so let's see what happens. Oh, look at this. What you want to do from this screen here, boot Mac OS X from USB. We'll do that. Runs so quiet. I, I literally can't believe how quiet it is. We're going to install Mac OS X. Um, hopefully it should come up with the installer in a sec. And then we can get that installed. Um, and then, yeah, post installation. Multi-base stuff, installing all the drivers and that. So yeah, I'll check back in with you in a minute. This is probably going to take a little while to load, so... I'll uh, update you guys in a biddy. It's been another five minutes and this is the screen that I'm getting. It's not loading at all. Um, so I'm gonna try and disable uh, the NVIDIA accelerated graphics and see if that works um, so we can get past this boot screen. So it's like an hour later. This is the first time I'm seeing it get this far. So, I mean, it could get stuck again, but basically in the BIOS, when I loaded the optimized defaults, it actually changed some settings that I didn't want it to change. So I'm gonna basically leave a, a couple of links below in the description, so be sure to check them out. Obviously, the, the best website was that Tony Mac X86, by far has been the biggest help. So hopefully now this should be able to boot. Let's see what happens. I was like, oh yeah, it's working. Look how close that is to being done. Oh, I think it's stuck as well, man. It's okay, it's cool. We can work out what the problem is fairly easy. What we need to do is hit that restart button. Oh shit, that was so close. I nearly I nearly did it and it's actually, it's, it's working. Whoa, let's just leave it. I'm gonna leave it and be a bit patient. I'll check back in with you guys in a minute and uh, we'll see what's going on. Hey. Right, let's go through this then. Use English for the main language. Yes, please. I would much like to do that. We need to go into disk utility and actually probably format the drive. Oh, brilliant, it's not detected it. That really makes my day. Okay, so it hasn't detected my SSD. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shut this down and then go into the BIOS again and just make sure it's been detected in the BIOS and then try and boot again. See you in a minute. If I look tired, it's probably because I've just woken up. I'm gonna tell you all the things that went wrong. Number one, it got stuck at the Apple loading screen. It turns out that's because XHCI was disabled in the BIOS. Now, when we got past that step, we had problems with the hard drive. First of all, we couldn't read it. Second of all, it couldn't format it to the file type that it needed to actually install OS X. I spent ages trying to debug this using sudo commands. I even got another USB key to try and uh, boot to like a partition manager. Turns out that it was actually just the SATA cable. Anyway, the problems are fixed. As you can see, we booted into OS X. What's next is actually installing the drivers using a tool called MultiBeast. We're gonna do that now. Okay, I selected the um, 
quick start tab and then selected UEFI mode. Um, now I'm going to go to the drivers tab and what I need to do is read through the uh, manual here for the motherboard and find out what chipset I've got for audio, network, etc. I mean, some motherboards might have the same configuration, but what works for mine might not necessarily work with yours. Here's the settings that I used. I went into quick start, UEFI boot mode, audio drivers I used were the Realtek ALC1150. I also enabled the 100 series audio under the audio drivers. For network, I used the Intel Mozzie Ethernet V2.1.0.D0. For USB, I also increased the max port limit. Under system definition, I made it iMac 17,1. I didn't install the NVIDIA drivers because apparently some people have been noting a black screen upon reboot. So I'm going to install the NVIDIA web drivers next time I boot up. Let's see if it boots without the USB sticking. You can't see it, but it actually booted on my second monitor. But that's fine, I think we'll probably get a display on the second monitor for a bit and then we'll have to install the NVIDIA web drivers to activate both screens. Okay guys, quick update, it's now 10 past 1. I'm really happy, I've got it installed, I've got both monitors working. Now I'm going to try and dual boot and see if I can get Windows working, so I'll check back in with you guys in a bit. Time is now quarter past 4. So I've nearly been sort of fiddling around with this for uh, around 20 hours now. But there's a lot to learn and a lot to configure. I basically wanted both operating systems on one SSD. I had to create a new partition of unallocated space. So technically there wasn't a partition. And then I create the partition in Windows when I boot from that. Obviously it was a bit of trial and error for me. Hopefully you'll be able to get it done. Thank you all for watching. I'm gonna now go install some games and uh, get playing, see what this bad boy is like. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Peace out, love ya. Holy shit, what was that?